right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. We're still talking about the state of the nation in the political field. Dr. Boni Alwale wanted to respond on this issue to Sifuna. Yeah, just a short one uh, yeah. to Sifuna. Sifuna, this anger that you appear to have against the deputy president, turn it down. I mean, when on this channel you are telling people that you can compare Donald Trump with William Ruto, that you are saying Donald Trump is intellectually challenged, who doesn't know that William Ruto has proved himself intellectually? You know it. You cannot be a holder of a PhD degree in anywhere in the world if you are intellectually deficient. Number two, the issue of character. Donald Trump's character is nowhere near William Ruto. <laughs> Donald Trump, for your information, if you don't know him, he came into politics to become president. But Ruto has proved himself politically long before thinking of wanting to be president. Why don't you remind yourself, Samolo, honestly, that it is the same Ruto who was a member of Orange Democratic Movement, and through his leadership acumen, he helped Raila Dinka to become Prime Minister, helped Musalim Dawadi to become Deputy Prime Minister, helped President Uhuru, not once, but twice, to become the President of Kenya. That is not the kind of person you would say he lacks character politically. Thank you very much. But in the if <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Yeah. I think I think you can say anything of Deputy President William Ruto, but you cannot say he lacks character. And none of us have said that. Well, I think I well. think no no no. Uh, we talked of political hygiene and I want to go back to that. What Edin Sufuna says, which is the truth, is that in a politically hygienic situation, if we were being true to the Constitution and to the Political Parties Act, we cannot have all these things we are seeing. Because under the law, there's the actual declaration and crossing of the floor where you write to the speaker or you declare it on the floor. But you can also be deemed when the party that sponsored you, you have left it, you berate it, you associate with the other party, either new or old. In a politically hygienic situation, that ought not to be. And the person who would lead that more than any other is the deputy president. Now, I want to say two things. First, I want to call out my friend Isaac Maura because he's a good man. But he's a good man caught in a bad place and he doesn't know what to do with this. Because in that politically hygienic situation, the last person who should speak the way Isaac Maura is speaking is himself. Because Isaac Maura, my friend, first came to <coughs> parliament by virtue of that group he's calling Dynasty. He was brought to parliament through Raila Molodinga, through ODM. He was not elected. And at that time it was perceived that he came to parliament to represent a special group. Okay? The persons with disability. And then after that, my brother went to Vi and again he was not elected. But this time round, because he's politically astute, he made his way to the other group that he now calls the dynasty. He came to uh, parliament again through nomination, through Jubilee, which is headed by Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. All of them he now calls them a dynasty. You know, this narrative of dynasty and hustler, and I'll come back to it, is a very dangerous and misleading thing. First, I think we should be truthful if we are speaking English. What is the definition of a dynasty? You know, Dr. Boni Alwale, so, since you're a, a medic, sometimes you don't take time to look at the English words. Would you like so me now, to define it? I want, I want, I want to help you. Can, can, can I help you? I define words. it no, no, without no, referring no, to no, the no. dictionary. Don't be jittery. <laughs> don't be jittery. <laughs> Just listen to what the English <laughs> say of a hustler. You know, a, a hustler is to push or force one's way to obtain something by deceitful or illicit means, practice theft or swindling. So this is customers used of a pimp or prostitute to misrepresent one's ability in order to deceive someone. That is the definition of a hustler. In a politically hygienic situation that we are talking about, no person who wants to be elected or has been elected can call themselves a hustler with that definition. But you see, 
we are in a place where we have lost our moral compass. So even using a word like hustler, like thief, like swindler has become politically acceptable. Now, the leader of the hustler nation, the deputy president, came to limelight through a dynasty, through Moi, through Youth for Kanu 92, which at that time you were not part of, I know. Youth for Kanu was known only for getting money illicitly and distributing it. And that is the truth. After that, the deputy president moved out of the Moi umbrella and he came into the ODM movement. Of course, there were some movements there. Even at the ODM movement, and you've said it yourself, that he helped Raila to become prime minister. We can discuss about that. But the point is, he supported Raila at the time. Is it that at that time he didn't know that Raila belonged to what he now calls dynasty? In fact, I will tell you, in 2006, when we were in the Pentagon, and there was the presidential nominations, the deputy president actually supported Mudavadi to be the, the candidate for ODM and he would be deputy. Even Mudavadi now calls part of the dynasty. Did he know? Let's come to where he is now, supporting Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta. By the deputy president's own admission, <coughs> he says he has voted for Uhuru Kenyatta five times. Five times he says so. All these four times or five times, he did not know that. You see, it can only mean one thing, that either the deputy president is foolish or is fooling those he is bringing to the hustler nation. But because I don't think he's foolish, I think it's the others whom he's fooling. Now, I do not want to be part of that. The idea of a hustler and a hustler nation is a false narrative. It introduces, it's a subterfuge. It is supposed to remove a very fundamental issue. It is supposed to cloud the fundamental issue which arose as a reason now for three circle of elections. Yeah. The fact that you cannot have two tribes appropriate the presidency for 58 years. Yes, I can restate it again, even as you're looking for me, at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> Since independence in 1963, we have had two tribal formations dominate the presidency for 58 years. And now it has come to question again, but because it is a serious question, the only way to now create it is to try and camouflage the tribe and bring some class war, some imaginary class war. And it's a very dangerous thing. Okay. In the last two or three days, you've seen what has, has started happening. And about two weeks ago, I tweeted on this. When you start the class war, it is much worse than the tribal issues we've had because it will not spare you. It will not spare you, Dr. Olwale, that merely because you're in the Hustler Nation. When you saw, just yesterday, I saw two instances one lorry that was burnt, I think they had hit some border border or something, carrying cows and all that, and it was burnt to smithereens. <coughs> yes. Do you think those cows were from Rarieda? <laughs> As in Rarieda, we have very you know, lean, small cows that we can't even sell anywhere. Do you think that hurts those who are perceived to be dynasties? That even me who went to school barefoot, now I'm supposed to be a dynasty. Then I saw another car being burned, and they were shouting, Choma, Choma Hustler, I think, what were they saying? Choma Dynasty, Choma Dynasty. It's a very dangerous thing. Let us do our politics decently. Let us disagree. Let us say anything. But let's not start words that we cannot control. What Trump did, which now has become a very dangerous thing in the US, what has not happened in 200 years yes. since 1812, is he started this narrative of Trumpism, of white supremacy, and he fueled something that was always there. And 75 million Americans believe that you can do something to reclaim America, and it means white supremacy. Those words, no matter what he says today, no matter his impeachment, will remain, and it will take 100 years or more to restore it. Let us not do that in this country. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I, I'd like yeah. to give Honorable Moura a right of reply for yes. what uh, sure. Honorable Mutinda Molo mentioned. Sure. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Trevor. I think it's very, very yeah. uh, surprising to hear uh, the kind of conversations that uh, my good brother uh, Otienda Molo is trying to uh, assert. And I think it's very, very, uh, sorry to use this word, but hypocritical, because 
you, you take uh, snapshots of what is happening currently and you attribute it uh, to the fact that people are becoming conscious of the fact that uh, you cannot keep on relying on the tribe as a means of political mobilization. Because if you talk about domination uh, of the tribe, then you also can also say the same of the opposition politics. Why <laughs> is it that, for example, uh, opposition politics have been dominated by people from one region of this country? And the truth of the matter is that the tribe is used only as a means for some people to accumulate wealth and power uh, at, the, at, uh, you know, at, at the behest of, of the people. I mean, it's, it's a false narrative that because you speak the same language, that because you come from the same region, that then you have the same kind of privileges. And, and you can analyze and you can delve into this, and that is why it, it has actually not worked. Number two, I want to say that, um, because he, has, he's, he said this uh, directly towards me, uh, I personally, as Isaac Maigon Waura, there is always this narrative of thinking like you go and collect people and you nominate them. No, that's not the case, my brother. That's not the case. Political parties look for value in individuals that they nominate because they also represent the special interest groups, as you have said. They come from a certain region. And just like football, they are strikers. You, don't, you cannot say that Isaac Moro is just waiting there with a begging ball to be nominated by ODM and the next time to be nominated by, by Jubilee. No, not at all. When I was in ODM, I was very useful. I helped in crafting the party's manifesto. I helped in crafting the, uh, bringing people with disabilities uh, from uh, oblivion, actually, because the first time I came there, I was told to bring five people as observers. By the time I left, there was the Old Orange Democratic Disability League, you see? And also, I made sure, because when we were writing the 2007 manifesto, chapter 17, with the whole of it was about disability for the first time in the history of this republic, I made sure that, uh, we pushed the issues into the Constitution. Dr. Otiende Amolo, you can remember, when you were in the Committee of Experts, I was in the reference group for the same reason. So it is not, it's, it's a false narrative to imagine that now you are just there because, oh, somebody feels like you are good. Or, no, 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 no. Political parties want people who are useful, and I have been very useful. And when you also get nominated, please, let's agree, you also have your own mind. There is what you believe in. And also you have your own ambitions. You can see how things are, and for me, uh, if you look at nominations, which of course you can even go ahead and say President Uhuru Kenyatta was once nominated, uh, you can talk about Moses Wetangul was once nominated, Milio Diambo, you can name many great leaders who have gone through that process. Yeah. The whole idea is to ensure, Trevor, that yeah. the group of people that you represent who would otherwise find it difficult to be elected because of their minority nature yeah. now have an opportunity now to be elected. Okay. And when you, sorry, let, let me explain this. When you come to Roiro uh, constituency again, where I ran for office, this is an office, this is a constituency that is highly, again, underrepresented. Yeah. On a normal scale, it requires to have four members of parliament. So again, you're talking about some form of population or marginalization, which also I have to carry forward with. Okay. And any attempt going forward has to be informed by the people. And what are people saying, just to conclude on this matter, okay. is that who has actually departed from the program? The person who has departed from the program yeah. is those people who think that the Jubilee Party can have another candidate other than the deputy party leader, who is William Samoy Arapruto. And they're saying, for them, they would want to keep the promise. Because President Uhuru Kenyatta said, Yake Kumi and Ayaruto Kumi. And that's the program that we are following. What if so the people disagree, to... Mwaura? Yeah. <laughs> what if right. the people disagree? Right. There's a difference between the promise that was made between two individuals, but it's the people who ultimately decide. What if they disagree? What do you mean by the people disagreeing? That, that ballot has not... <laughs> are they, do, don't that they have a voice in this? Do they have a voice in terms of what? In terms of their electing the president that they want. They will elect the president that they want. And right now, Trevor, I want you to come with me to Roiro constituency, to Kiambu County, to Moranga County, listen to what people are saying on the ground, that they are actually with William Samoy Arapruto because they want to keep the promise. Because for a very long time, people have been saying, oh, the people from this community, from this region, or oh, you cannot trust them. Now, the people are the ones who are invoking and who want actually to enforce that promise. And they are not going to uh, come out <coughs> of that. So the, you're the saying this is, this is more about the promise rather than the capability of the person to lead the nation. <laughs> but let me ask you, the deputy president has been elected uh, by people in Mount Kenya region since 2013. He has, been, he has proven to be closer to them, actually. He is the one who is available on the ground. He has actually been with them 
and actually they have seen his capacities. So you cannot say uh, that capacity is only resident to certain other, uh, other leaders. Deputy yeah. President has actually acquitted himself. Okay. Of the fact that he has the best interest of the people that he represents. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, want to yeah, yes, on Trevor, yeah. it, that's a very interesting discussion. And I remember <laughs> just before you went to, to the break, uh, we were talking, uh, you, you asked a very poignant question that uh, indeed, and Maura is saying that uh, the deputy president has been elected twice and he has been with these people, he's been close to them, he has uh, acquitted himself, he says. And yet, the problems persist. He's still talking about things that he should have addressed. Uh, when you talk about uh, new beginnings, when you talk about uh, uh, these uh, poor people, they have been there. And you look at the promises that uh, they made. And this is where, Trevor, I want to be very clear to my brother Halwale. There are a lot of parallels to draw between William Ruto and, uh, and, and uh, Donald Trump. Uh, it is widely acknowledged that uh, the coming of Trump is what uh, brought the, the, the so-called uh, uh, age of alternative facts where the line between truth and lies was uh, very seriously blurred. That, in fact, there are leaders who can stand up in public and lie, and tell lies without a shame. You have seen that even in the, in the wake of the elections, uh, social media sites had to create uh, a fact check on the things that uh, Donald Trump was saying. It is the same thing that we see here. William Ruto is, uh, is, is the one who promised uh, the young people that uh, we would have a stadia built for them to develop their talent. He promised them a million jobs every year under Jubilee administration. And if he was with uh, uh, Maura in Ruiru, a, a million jobs a year, even if Ruiru was to get only 5% uh, of that, we would have seen an improvement in terms of uh, 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 unemployment in, in, in Ruiru. But it has not happened. And yet, Maura is here claiming that the people are with him because the eight years he has acquitted himself, acquitted himself in what respect? We have seen uh, Donald Trump use his office to advance his own, uh, uh, you know, private interest, which is uh, basically the definition of corruption. You have uh, a deputy president here who has been found by a court to have illegally acquired uh, property belonging to a hustler, uh, you know, in the name of the late Muteshi, and it is a court decision that found him. We have problems with uh, how he has acquired other properties, including uh, Western. Uh, where the uh, Lands Commission has found that it was illegal, illegally acquired. So there are parallels, people who foment division, and my senior uh, Otende Amolo has brought it out uh, very well. Uh, you have a deputy president who was actually indicted at the ICC for very serious crimes. So the parallels between, uh, in fact, th th there is no greater uh, example of somebody who reflects uh, William Ruto. And by the way, Boni, uh, the acquisition of academic papers does not prove intellect. That is something that you must know as a, as a doctor. And especially in a country such as ours, where uh, many of your friends in Tangatanga have acquired many of these papers through very questionable means, you cannot claim that you are not aware that there are in fact questions as to how some of these PhDs are acquired and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and awarded. So it is something that we must be alive to. And this uh, culture of deceit, Halwale is seated here. I saw a report in the newspaper that even this new party that they are claiming is uh, an extension of Jubilee, UDA, uh, lied to, you know, in, in, in keeping with their character, lied to aspirants in Matumbu, and in fact I suspect it was Halwale making those calls, <laughs> <laughs> that, that uh, we have conducted an opinion poll and you are the one. And then they tell the same story to the same person, and these guys show up at uh, the offices of a party, all of them uh, find uh, <coughs> the, the, their colleagues there, yeah. and they, 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 they were told the same story, only to reach there and try to be pressured that... Uh, they need to support one candidate. Yeah. For <coughs> so what we are saying, uh, Trevor, is that we must have an honest discussion. I, I am alive to the fact that, uh, first of all, Kenyans are very angry. Kenyans are angry for various reasons. And uh, what uh, our brothers have done very well is to exploit that anger. Uh, the anger f has been fomented for a long time that the economy has not been performing as well as it should. Yeah. Uh, people have lost jobs. And of course, it was compounded by the... Uh, outbreak of, uh, of corona, which has led to even more massive job losses. Yeah. We must have an honest discussion about, uh, with the young people of this country, about how jobs are created. People need to understand what is the effect of corruption on uh, job creation. For instance, when an investor comes to Kenya and uh, there is uh, 10 levels of uh, clearance, uh, in terms of co cor corrupt clearance, yeah. that so and so must receive his cut. I, I, I saw the story of uh, uh, Aliko Dangote who wanted to put uh, a cement factory, I believe it was in Kitui, and he, he basically had to relocate the plant to another country that is a bit more friendly to investment. Because people were lining up 
to, to, to essentially receive uh, bribes. Yeah. So young people must understand the correlation between leadership and how jobs are created. Okay. Jobs are not created by uh, uh, what we are being told here, haslanomics. Because okay. if it were true, if it were true that uh, that is the case, then William Ruto should have started as uh, the first uh, you know, project of Jubilee. Yes. Instead of giving the laptops to the young children in school who had no electricity and there were no classrooms and so on and so forth. Why didn't we see uh, wheelbarrows from 2013? Okay. In fact, by now every young person would have had a wheelbarrow. Okay. Aluela, let me respond to this. And in all fairness, all these leaders have actually been in leadership. So they can't not point fingers as if and uh, absolve themselves from the blame. Kenyans, Kenyans have always had these problems. The, uh, the deputy president has been there. The president, Uru Kenyatta, has been there. Raila Odinga has also been there. Should it then be time maybe for younger Kenyans to think of a completely fresh leadership? Yes, I want to respond to that, uh, but allow me. Important issues have been articulated yeah. by my colleagues here, and I should just comment on them very quickly. The first one is, uh, Amolo, you are talking about uh, the issue of defining a hustler. There is nothing wrong with a Kenyan proudly calling himself hustler. The dictionary that you are trying to quote, please, defines hustler in reference to three issues. The issues that suit you are the ones we are selling to the public now. They refer to hustlers as prostitutes. That's what you want the public to take home today. They refer to hustling as being illicit dealing. That's what you want the public to take away. But the hustler that is understood by us, the hustler that is understood by Kenyans, is the hustler who in this dictionary, let me read, I do not want to, uh, to look like I'm speaking my own things from Marinha, <laughs> is the person who is adept at aggressive selling. The guys in Juakali, in Eldoret, are aggressive sellers of their goods. The guys in Riareta, at the shopping center there, are aggressive sellers of their goods. They're hustlers. William Ruto was an aggressive seller of chicken. Boni Galuale, in Marinha, in my earlier days, I was an aggressive seller of sugarcane, black porridge, and firewood for making changa. And we've made it in life. And we are proud of it. And we are telling young people that you can start from somewhere and grow to become big. The second issue raised by Amolo, and which is extremely sensitive, is the issue of tribalism. Amolo, please, however much you hate us, you hate William Ruto, don't use tribalism to further your political interests. I know you as a, 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 a lover of football. Every time before a match is played, players kneel to send a clear message that racism yeah. has no place in society. Maybe members of parliament should be kneeling before they enter into the chamber to send a clear message every day <coughs> they go to parliament that tribalism has no place. This nonsense of rotational presidency the president should actually be impeached for promoting tribalism. He is the symbol of national unity. He is not expected to either should change one tribe, two tribes, or promote one tribe or two tribes at the expense of the other tribes. Parliament should call out President Uhuru for the tribal remarks he made in Sabatia. Secondly, when you say that two tribes have been allowed to be president in this country, it's a fact. In fact, elsewhere I've been recorded speaking to the same. But when you speak to it, and then you give the cure that President Uhuru was attempting to give in Sabatia, you want to throw our country to the dogs. Sifuna, yes. because of your age, I don't know where you were in 1992. I was in school. Yes. 
you might have been in school in the kindergarten, so. <laughs> since 1992, Sifuna, take it seriously. Since 1992, no tribe has been denied an opportunity to participate in the presidential election. Raila, who is supporting those tribal remarks of, of Uhuru, Raila was himself a candidate in 1992, as he has remained a candidate at every other general election. So if he has been there trying to become president, how does it amount to laws being shortchanged or being denied an opportunity to produce a president? Lawyers have been at every presidential election in this country, through Girongo, through Wamalua, through Mudabadi, through Kukubo, they have been at every presidential <laughs> election. Somalis have, been, have had an opportunity to be at presidential election through Dida, through Dida, and so on and so forth. You cannot expect the deputy president to resign for defending the constitution, which speaks to the fact that the president is a symbol of national unity, and two, the constitution does not provide for rotational presidency. So when the deputy president spoke against what was said in Sabatia, he should not be expected to resign. Okay. Secondly, Trevor, yeah. the deputy president should not be called out to resign by ODM for the remarks he made in Bomas. They were factual. He raised six things. And those things resonated very well with all reasonable Kenyans, to the extent that it gave birth to KCC, a KICC meeting, which now brought in a revised version of BBI. Yeah. You want the deputy president to resign for defending the Constitution? Okay. You want the deputy president to resign because he's calling for consensus on matters of gross national <coughs> importance? Are you really being reasonable? Okay, let's, let's talk about this rotation of presidency issue. Yeah. I'll start with you on Rebo Tiende. Okay, as we come to it, just uh, two quick things. Uh, and you know, my friend Isaac Maura is a good man, and he adds value, and I agree. But that <laughs> does not change what I said. <laughs> that the, the, he owes his nomination to the very dynasties he's now attacking. There are many people who add value, but they don't get the opportunity to All be right. nominated. If you actually honestly come to a conclusion that um, those who elected you on a certain party, you want to move from that party, you ought to cross over. But it's even more so when you are nominated, because it's not even about those who elected you. In fact, it's about the person who nominated you. And the day you decide that uh, you discover their dynasties or they don't stand for what you stand for, then tell them to <coughs> take their seat. S wait for nomination from UDA. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, on the UDA, you know, I know when Dr. Alwali joined the Jubilee, because I was there. Uh, I'm sure at some point he'll tell us when he joined UDA. Because I suspect that when you look at the records at the Register of Political Parties, you won't find his name among the members of UDA. <laughs> but that he will clarify. <laughs> you know, let's come to, <laughs> let's, let's come to what, uh, you know, Dr. Alwali. <laughs> you know, fortunately for you, you are neither a linguist nor an etymologist. <laughs> yes. So you can choose to get a definition <coughs> of a word and just choose one line and hope that you can explain it. You know, when you are looking at the definition of hustler, then look at the wordings and the way they are arranged. Even the only one you've chosen, you know, even the one you've chosen, you didn't completely read it. <laughs> the one you've chosen uh, talks of... Um, actually very good, <laughs> to act aggressively, especially in business dealings. Do you know everything that Edwin Sifuna was talking about is what that is about, to act aggressively in business dealings? That is a euphemism for corruption. <laughs> you may not have known, but that's exactly what it is. You know, you cannot tell us here, and please let's stop some of these narratives. You know, Dr. Halwale, even I, in my young age, I used to sell mandazi at what, 10 cents. Good. 
You're I'm a hustler. Siriba Teachers College. You're a hustler. But I will not tell people that I'm here <laughs> because I was selling mandazis. How many mandazis can you sell at 10 cents to even buy a car? You know, please. Mm. This, the deputy president is a man who went to the University of Nairobi. When was he selling the chicken enough to make an empire? And at that time, you and I know that you would not wait even for long to join the university. You would be called on merit. You do your exams and you go, you know, fishing as some of us went. Then you are told your calling letter has come. The most, the, you'd have a very short time. So this narrative of people saying I sold chicken until I made an empire. Some say I sold uh, charcoal until it's absolute nonsense. You and I know that other than being an educated man, the deputy president, other than joining politics, has never worked on record anywhere. Let's stop this nonsense of, you know, you don't, you can't sell chicken in so, in the, how many years? In about 20 years, to become one of the richest people in this country and the region. That's absolute nonsense. How many chicken would you sell? <laughs> 100 billion chicken. Who would even buy it? But let's go back to the real issue here. The real issue here <coughs> is, and we cannot run away from it. And we, the reason why the Constitution talks of discrimination and mention all those, tribe, race, you know, sex, religion, and all that, is so that it promotes positive discrimination. But we can end up in a situation of negative discrimination by circumstances. Just like Isaac Mamura was saying, Rui should actually be divided into several constituencies, and I agree, okay? So when there you end up by default in a negative discrimination, uh, discrimination situation, then you must work positively to remedy it. Yeah. There's nothing wrong in talking of any one county, that even if you have one major tribe or clan in a county, they, you cannot allow them to take all the seats of senator, of governor, deputy governor, and all that. That is not to promote uh, you know, uh, clanism. It is actually to reduce it, to say, and this must be said, and now we focus on it, that by historical happenstance, and we can debate whether it was legitimate or not, whatever the case, when in six decades of the life of a country, only two ethnicities out of over 44 have occupied the highest office of the land, that that ought to change, that is not tribalism. That is, in fact, to promote national unity. Because if that continues, it breeds ethnic contempt, and there come a time when people decide that we cannot change through the ballot. Then what do they do? They resort to other unconstitutional means. We do not want that. We must encourage a conversation when we say, whether it is a question of the ethnicity, whether it's the clan, whether it's the religion, there must be a way in which you can have this conversation and keep changing them. It is actually quite healthy to have a situation where <coughs> other tribes also come in, they do their messes, so that when then uh, you speak, we will not say, uh, the lawyers have never gotten it. We will say, but you also had your chance. The lawyers, yeah. you had your chance. The kisses, you had your chance. That is quite okay. There's nothing wrong with that. <coughs> My last point on this, but the truth of the a, matter is this. Should it be an issue of tribe or merit on the body? The, the truth of the uh, matter is this. All those things are to be considered. Because if it wasn't, then you don't need to mention anything. The idea of national unity is to bring the different formations in any one country and bring a narrative that makes them have a sense of oneness. And therefore, it can be tribe, yeah. it can be religion, it can be sex, it can be clan, whatever brings them together. But if you have domination by one religion, by one sex, by one clan, by one tribe for too long, then that brings disunity. Okay. And that's the whole point. Right. Now, but ultimately, it's not a matter of force. Because ultimately, it's the people to elect. Okay. But there's nothing wrong with telling the people that you have elected even if it's the laws. Now, Isaac Mangwara says, you know, certain regions have dominated opposition politics. <laughs> Isaac, that's our exact point. We now want you to come and dominate it. Correct. <laughs> Some of us have dominated <laughs> it for too long. We <laughs> want to leave it. Yeah. 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 very quickly. Yeah. 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 Let me start by saying, you know, in 92, I was in class five at uh, Kakamega Township Primary, and in the school, yeah. one of my most enduring memories in terms of politics was lining up with my mother at the Kano office. Uh, it used to be opposite KCB Bank. He knows it. Yes. To receive money from YK92, the first 500 shillings I ever saw, eh, and we used to call it Jirongo, 
it came from YK92 and mm -hmm. William Ruto knows uh, mm -hmm. something about it. In fact, I, I am not, I'm surprised. Uh, Otiende, I don't know why we are struggling to explain why William Ruto is not uh, uh, the, the, the person of a moment, as Maura says. Yet Boni Halwale is seated there. He is way more eloquent than some of us to explain these things. And I wish you had the clips that uh, uh, Halwale used to, you know, when he used to rile uh, the, the crowds there and explain to us that if indeed Edward Ouko, then the Auditor General, was allowed to look into how William Ruto's uh, wealth, you know, has been acquired, that there would be a lot of questions there. Even on this question of uh, tribe, Halwale has very eloquently put it, uh, and he knows, he, he has talked about the clip, that in fact it is not possible in a union of 44 nations that uh, uh, only two can dominate over uh, six decades. And when you ask the question of merit, uh, uh, Trevor, the question we ask ourselves, is it not possible to find merit elsewhere? And this discussion did not come from Raila Odinga as uh, Halwale is trying to pass off. This discussion has come from the leader of Mount Kenya, which is uh, arguably one of the biggest uh, and most powerful voting blocks in this country. They themselves have started this discussion, Halwale. It, it did not come from Raila Odinga. It is Uhuru Kenyatta as the leader of Mount Kenya saying they recognize that they live in a community of nations of other 44 nations and that it doesn't bode well because as you know politics is a is perception just yesterday people were calling me as you know i'm a farmer i'm a sugarcane farmer with nzoya they were calling me yesterday to ask miss ifuna we have seen in the newspaper that there is nine billion that has been given by the ministry of agriculture uh, for revival of uh, coffee uh, factories in central kenya and the minister is quoted as saying that it was a pilot phase then they were asking miss ifuna how is it that this pilot phases never start with us, the sugarcane farmers or, or the farmers in Western Kenya. They asked me in December as well that uh, we had uh, that uh, Mount Kenya region was getting 500 kilometers of the so-called Mau Mau roads. And then they said, Sifuna, why can't we get 200 uh, kilometers of Mulembe roads in Western Kenya and that it would uh, be impactful? Politics is perception. And Trevor, we, they say with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. If they... <coughs> Uh, region with the greatest power in terms of their voting ability is realizing that in order for us to advance together as a country they need to be open to looking for the merit that you're talking about from other areas because this feeling that only lawyers have the ability to do this or only Kikuyus or only any uh, uh, Kalenjins have the ability to do this is what foments uh, this feeling by some Kenyans that they are not part of this state. Okay. And th the truth of the matter is that political power is also about resource allocation. And I've given you two examples of the roads and even the, 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 the industries. Yeah. So Halwale knows in his heart of hearts that indeed, even if we were talking about uh, uh, that we want the son of a poor man to be the next president, that poor man cannot come from the people or the, 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 the tribes that have uh, dominated the, the, the presidential office for the, for the past 60 years. Is it not possible to find a poor lawyer to make uh, the president? Because Halwale also knows, and I will repeat this, that in fact, if it comes to poverty, the people of Western Kenya know poverty. They say in Kiluya, we live with poverty, it, it is with us. So indeed, if this hustler narrative is uh, what Halwale wants to go with, Halwale, I want to challenge you to find the poorest man in Malinya and give us as a presidential candidate under UDA. Because it's not going to happen. We have seen the examples you have set even with Nairobi here. You have not go gone and found a poor hustler from Kawangware, who's your, so, oh, your, your brothers in Kawangware languishing in poverty, or a maid uh, in Kawangware languishing in poverty and said, we want to give you uh, the, the political support to make you governor. You have gone and looked for somebody who, by all accounts, is a rich woman. So let us not hide ourselves. And by the way, Trevor, I want to repeat this. Yeah. I personally want to commend the leadership of Mount Kenya because that narrative and discussion that they have begun is what many Kenyans have always uh, advanced. Because there was a point where <coughs> if, uh, if you are the largest tribe, there was this feeling that in fact, we could get the most incompetent person we have. But for as long as he is ours, we will use our numerical strength yeah. uh, to be able to push him through. So this is a positive, and in fact, it is not excluding two tribes. It's not as if we are going to pass legislation, Halwale, to say that if you, have, you come from a tribe that has produced a president, you will not run. Just like the people you have mentioned, eh, that 
you know, not everything can be legislated. Halwale, we can sit around the table and say it doesn't bode well for the yeah. country and the country's unity. We are not excluding two tribes. We are including the other 42 on the table. And that is how you can choose to look at it because you can either see the glass as half full or, 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 or as half, half empty. empty. All right, I have to take a quick break here on Daybreak. When we come back, we're still talking about this issue on rotational presidency. And I'll hear what um, uh, Senator Maura has to say about this. There's a lot of feedback coming through. Also try to squeeze some of them in, in this conversation on State of the Nation. Stay with us.